Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Waiting for Tokyo. My name is Michael Raziel. Today, I got my man Omar Goodness Craddock. He's a Team USA track athlete, does the triple jump, loves playing in the sand. He's a three-time NCAA national champ at Florida. Give me a gator chomp. Come on now. Let's Let's get it. Three-time national champ for the United States of America, and he's the gold. Had recently got gold at the 2019 Pan American Games. Omar, how you doing today, man? Amazing, amazing. I just finished a nice little workout, so I'm feeling I'm feeling even pumped up right now. What were your initial thoughts when you heard that the games were being postponed from 2020 to 2021 in Tokyo? Bro, for real, I was upset. I was I was real upset just because. Like in, in our sport, right, in track and field, people look at us as like a model of what the human body can do uh, athletically, physically, whatever you want to call it. We're like that model. And being that, you know, it was canceled, it was just like, damn, we don't, we don't get that opportunity to showcase that in front of the world, especially being that the Olympics is, excuse me, the, uh, it's, it's the pinnacle of our sport, right? That's, that's, Obviously, being in America, being an American, this is uh, the Olympics is the only time that Americans know about our sport. Um, and so we have this quad coming up. It's the Olympics was 2020, 21 was the world champs, 23 was going to be another world champs, and then 24 would be at Olympics again. So, you know, it was upsetting just like, man, like y'all, y'all just put this uh, postponed it. It was going to be my first one going to. Um, so yeah, you know, emotions was was like this, and and more like this, because it's like, man, I'm trying to I'm trying to show these boys it's my turn. Was it assumed that you were going to get that spot in 2020? Was it your spot that they already named you to that team? How exactly did was that going to work out? So with us, we still have to qualify. We would still have to go to the uh, U.S. trials and still come what top two, top three um, at the event. Uh, but I, I would say in the fans' eyes or in some of, you know, our teammates, it was kind of like, you know, there, there is, yeah, you have the shoe win, um, coming off the Pan Am win. Uh, and then I, it was just more hunger after not making the final at the, uh, at the world championships last year in Doha, you know, um, I, I had a phenomenal year in 2019. I, I opened up the season as number one in the world. And then I think I, I just went down to maybe like number three altogether. Um, and then boom, I, I still, I didn't get the medal at, at the world champ. So it's like, all right, let's just go ahead and, and prepare for what really matters. You know what I'm saying? The Olympics, you know, uh, and then we hit with, hit with this postponement. So how have you, uh, how has this year affected training specifically for you? Um, well, in the specifics, it's just like weight room. There's no weight room that, that, that I can get to or use, um, except for the latter part of the year. Once it got to about July, that's when I was able to get to somewhere consistently. But even then, it was, I wouldn't even say consistently, but uh, more than not, right? Um, But at that point, it was just, uh, let's just stay healthy. Let's just stay fit. Let's stay healthy and be prepared for next year. So yeah, I I competed July 9th. That was the only outdoor competition I had. It was the Inspiration Games. And it was dope because we all competed in like seven, eight, maybe nine different countries. Um, I competed in Cali, and then my friend Christian competed in Florida. The other competitor, Pedro, competed over in Portugal. So it was, you know, it was just pretty dope, you know, virtual competition. Um, and then after that, it was just like, all right, there's there's not really much else that I can get into. The international borders are supposed to be closed. So at this point, it's like, all right, I'm starting to just shut down. Where else could I place my mental? Because in this sport, it's a mental thing, right? It's not we don't we're not like football, basketball, any other these team sports, where if even if we don't have to go to the facility to train, we can go play pickup football, play pickup. There's no pickup track, right? Mm. Um, so I just channeled my energy into into doing things like you know we have this lip gloss and lip chap these goods, so we got our own lip lip product, you know. Um, I've, I've de- delved more into my personal training, which is what the goodness hour is about, which is what I just told you I finished. Um, so really just diving in more into servitude to still place myself somewhere, uh, that, that still, you know, um, breeds like my, my own passions. So how are you utilizing that mental, as you said, to make sure that you're going to continue to stay ahead of everybody that is now coming up 
to 2021 because there's you know a, an extra year for a lot of people is a significant amount of time for them to get much right. much better right um I, I i guess i can say i could take this veteran approach because you know i've been around the game for a while and for the ones that you just spoke on that are coming up they haven't necessarily been in this type of arena um so it'll be it's going to be fairly new for all of us just because i haven't been to the olympics you know um i've been to i've been on several u.s championship teams but not the olympics so it'll be fairly new for all of us but i can still go in with the attitude like all right man i already know what to do i know what to expect now it's just time for me to go and execute um and then i i already have the muscle memory so at this point that's what the the stand fit is for again i could just go back and say the mental is the most important so at that point it's I'm worrying about me. I can't worry about anybody else because if I'm paying attention to them, I'm not giving myself adequate amount of time to, you know, train or to train my my mental, uh, anything. So my main focus is me when it comes to, you know, when it when it's time to perform, when it's time to go compete, when it's time to do anything. So, um, and again, that's the, the 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 reason I have the goodness hour. It's been for me for years. Like I, whenever we were training and if coach didn't show up i knew for an hour i have to train i have to do something and so now i created goodness hour for the fans for for the fans of the sport and people that just always say they want to get fit well cool just come hang with me for an hour at most an hour at least 30 minutes so you can say i did something for myself but in turn you got to hang out with one of your favorite you know olympic athletes so be it you know what i'm saying so Again, it's a form of servitude during this time. So. Well, ex- explain explain the goodness hour a little bit more. So yeah, yeah. Now, goodness hour is uh, it's just a time again to dedicate an hour to yourself. Uh, it's, it's on my website, journeyglobally.com. You just go and you can book an, an hour. So I kind of set it up um, for people that like if you get up early in the morning, I'm up on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We'll get up at six a.m. If you book that class or that time frame, cool. Let's get it in together for an hour, six a.m. to seven. That's Pacific Standard Time. Um, so that'll be 8 p.m. or 8 a.m. Central and about 9 a.m. on the East Coast. So I still think that's fairly early either way it goes. After that, then there's a 9 o'clock slot, a 10.30 slot, then a 12 o'clock slot. Then by that midday is like when I actually have to go train and do my thing. And then I come back again later in the evening. Again, if people are signed up for those hours at 5 o'clock Pacific Standard or what is that? Uh, 7, 7 Central, 8 p.m. on the East Coast. It's like, all right, we can still get it in together 5 to 6 or whatever that hour is for you. Um, and then, boom, I just see you the next day or next time you plan to come. Uh, and, again, it's just uh, bringing you along the journey to show you what us as Olympic athletes do um, and in our spare time. So it's, it's what I get a lot is a, a lot of people want to know about my abs and, like, how I look the way I look. And I'm just like, well, it's – it's just constant work. You know, I'm, I may naturally be built like this, but I'm always working out, though. Mm-hmm. So whether it's we sitting here watching a Netflix show, we're going to do some stretching or some kind of, you know, hamstring or uh, glute workout just to just to do something for my physical body. You know, we just hang out. You know what I'm saying? Just like cause what it is. I've noticed a lot of people when I, I was a personal trainer, when I finished uh, uh, college in, in Florida, and um, a lot of people would get intimidated because of my physique. But it's just like, you're not trying to be me. You're trying to just be a better you. So if you come to the goodness hour, it's like, all right, I'm doing this. This is how much I can do. This is what's going to push me to that brink. But if you can't do, you know, 30 push-ups, cool, do 15. Because that's what you can do, you know. And so that's what it's, it's really about. It's, it's goodness for yourself. It's not for you to leave here in pain and upset, right? Come get some goodness. What have you had to do to kind of get creative and make sure that you're really doing as much as you possibly can in this time, understanding you won't be able to get everything that you need to do in? So when I first started in the sport, we we worked out in the parks a lot. So that's kind of what I went back to. Just just excuse me, my earlier my earlier stages in the sport. So just just grinding it out any way you can. Uh, you don't necessarily need all this fancy equipment to be great you know what i'm saying is uh i when you when you take the time to uh study the greats i guess you could say they didn't necessarily rely on that they didn't rely on i mean even if you're in high school right you don't rely on like your your college's 
weight room and all that. You just go get it in how you can. And so that's that's the mentality that I had to come into the rest of the year with is once the training center out here was closed, it was tough getting access to a track or a weight room anywhere. So it's like, all right, well, what can I do? I don't necessarily need to, to land right now. So let me just go bound up a hill. Let me go run up a hill. Uh, if I do need to land somewhere, then shoot, let's make a soft pile somewhere or we can find a mattress or maybe we can sneak onto somebody track jump a fence and then, you know, do some, do some landing drills in the sand pit somewhere uh, or on a mat, you know? So it was just really just being creative. I think this time allowed for us athletes and just anybody to be creative. This is, this is, it's a, it's a lot of people that's not in work right now. This is the time to be creative and do what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? We, everybody got their own dreams and aspirations, but are you going to take the time to actually go after it? Or just keep talking about it. So how do you think this this opportunity to be creative kind of it sounds like go back to your roots a little bit? How do you think that's gonna help you in your pursuit of of you know making the games and making that team in 2021? Uh because I'm gonna believe that everything I'm doing is going towards the end goal. Um, you know, we talk daily, my my lady and myself, or even like just my my study group will talk about how we can pray or we can ask for something. And you can believe for it. And then once you believe that, yeah, it's yours. Now you have to work towards it. So it's, it's, uh, there's this analogy that Snoop Dogg used about separation, right? Between his friends and himself. And he like, you know, b before we were here and then I started to do this while everybody either stayed here or kind of went here. Since I ascended and elevated, it's not my job to, to go back and close this gap. You, you should, you know, want to meet me and close the gap yourselves because I, I went to a new plane. I'm showing you how it's done. All you got to do is do the same thing. And so uh, this time it allowed me to do all of that. Now I see the goal. The goal is the Olympics. It got pushed a little further. Cool. So now that it's a little further, I have a little more work to get back close to that goal again. So it's, it's just all um, just how I viewed it all. And that's how I view it everything. And Again, it, it allowed me more time to be creative. Uh, I do music as well. I, I like I like to entertain. I've always liked to entertain when I was a, a kid. My parents would always have me come up in the front dancing. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It could be like little talent shows, singing, rapping, whatever it was. Um, and so that's, that's also giving me that time to do that as well. Just create, create, create. Because at the end of it all, I will receive what I put into it. So with right. that in mind, how do what what do you need to do more of over this next period of time to solidify your spot? It, it seemed like you were you felt like you were a shoe in already, but how do you solidify that spot even more now? Understanding that this, you still have a few months to wait, just keep proving to myself that I'm doing what's right. So anytime like with my training, like again with with the goodness hour, if people are coming, if they keep signing up for the classes, I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Even if they don't, I'm still going to go out there and do the goodness hour just to prove that I put in that time. If I set it up as a time for people to join, I'm going to still be there for that for that hour. Um, and then when it when it comes to my own personal training, I'm actually going and I'm doing it. So that last statement I said before, what I know I'm putting in, I will get out. You know, that's 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 an affirmation. You know, that's I'm claiming that it, it will come back out. Um, so I mean that's that's really about it. Like, I just believe in what I'm doing for 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 my goals for myself. So whether or not it plays out the way I want it to, somehow I'm going. I'm still gonna win. I'm gonna win. And so at the end of the day, when the Olympics come around and I'm there, I all I see is a top podium. I see a podium finish. Period. So I mean, people got to come take it from me. You know what I'm saying? I see myself every day. I don't see my competitors every day, but I see me every day. So at the end of the day, so long as I beat or bettered myself, I'm solid. I'm solid. You're solid, man. That is absolutely fantastic. Omar, love the inspiration. Love the motivation. Appreciate the highlight of you and excited to see you on that podium come uh -huh. Tokyo 2021. We had Omar Goodness Craddock here with us, uh -huh. Team USA track and field athlete on the triple jump, three-time national champ at Florida. Give me say another that. Gator Chomp. Say that. Say that. Let's get it. Three-time USA national champion gold medal at the 2019 Pan American Games and soon to be Olympic athlete. Omar, appreciate your time. Now that's man. that talk. Yes, sir. I appreciate you now.